Okay, okay, we're back. This is John. And it's Eric. It's one of geeks. We're so, missing Paul. Yeah, again. <laughs> Gonna be a lot of that this month. Apparently. I think I'm, I'll be uh, I'll be out next week and the week after. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you guys are killing me. Well, I'll be here the week after, but uh, my wife won't be here, so I have to figure out how to do something with the kids if we're going to do this. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We will sort something out somehow. But uh, Yeah, so uh, today we are doing kind of a, a catch-all. It's our, our Geekly Weekly or Geekly Bi-Weekly, whatever the hell we're calling this thing. I have no idea anymore. Mm-hmm. But uh, we're just going to kind of run through some stuff that we've seen in the news, so it'll probably be a short episode. Uh, let's see. I guess this whole episode is probably going to be like mostly like Star Wars related or Disney or whatever. Yeah, so we haven't really talked since the 29th, right? August 29th, which was the day I that... don't think we even discussed the new trailer. Yeah. Because I think that was, it yep. was before the hurricane. Yep. And then the new trailer dropped, and we didn't get together because we were all busy out of town doing whatever. So we dropped the DCU content one. So we haven't even discussed that new trailer yet. Nope. All the, right. So we need to the do homage trailer. Galaxy's Edge Grand Opening. This will be a Star Wars centric newsy episode because um, we need to do the Star Wars trailer you just mentioned, the Galaxy's Edge Grand Opening, which was two Tuesdays ago. Um, uh, we need to do the Mandalorian thing that, that we put on the blog because yep. um, I'm excited about it. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's a couple other things, but but, but it's enough. It's enough yeah. for one episode. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially with two of us talking, it's going to go a little bit quicker, but yeah, not, I think not too right. much. We tend to, we the two people that are here are the ones that tangent the most. So hey, yeah, you know. we can over talk it for sure. <laughs> um, all right, but, so what are we starting with then? Let's start. With, you you uh, want to jump right into it? All right, all right. I wasn't sure if you you want to do Florida Man. Or oh yeah, um, good. You, you, you got, got Florida you Man. Got okay, Florida so Man. I got a quick one. I got a quick one. We'll do it. Uh, it. It's a partner to that one from a few weeks ago. You remember the if you throw shit, you must acquit. Yeah, that one. <laughs> so apparently there's a. You know, I thought this was something that just happened at the monkey cage at the St. Louis Zoo, but apparently people throw shit and piss at people all the time so that's it i guess it's that's going to happen so uh, man throws urine on a florida prosecutor during a sentencing hearing um so this is this is broward of course uh assistant state attorney it was a sentencing hearing for this guy who was apparently mad and somebody made him do it but i don't even know how he got it in the courtroom but he somehow got a container of piss and when, when the assistant state's attorney was up there talking he threw the piss at him and actually got in his fucking mouth He's a good shot. <laughs> so yeah, there's that. Um, so I guess he's gonna. Uh, he was he was in there for a murder charge. So I'm not sure that uh, the piss throwing is gonna make much of a difference. But they did postpone his hearing to do it at a later date. So he's definitely getting extra screwed on that sentencing. Yeah. No <laughs> shit. Uh, all right. Yeah, we'll save my Florida man for the next episode when we talk about some of the. Uh, um, Sony DC, uh, Sony and Marvel stuff. All right. So um, I guess first things first, going all the way back to the last time we met, Galaxy's Edge had their grand opening um, here in Florida on the 29th, so two Tuesdays ago. Um, if you if you watched the page, you probably saw there was like a massive crowd, I think. Uh, it was ridiculous. Like yeah. the whole front end all of Hollywood, Hollywood the studios, studios was just like anywhere. shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. And then I think by about 540 or so in the morning uh, around that time, there was 300 minute wait on the Falcon, yeah. <laughs> Falcon ride. It was crazy. <laughs> 540 in the morning. So at some point, though... Um, Disney instituted the virtual line controls, which they also had at California, but I guess they haven't really used much, where they control the number of people that can actually come into the Galaxy's Edge land. And that way they can keep all the ride wait times down a little more. So um, they instituted that, and I think um, maybe by like about 9 or 10 in the morning, the ride time was down on the Falcon to about 150 minutes, two and a half hours. Oh, yeah. Really not that terrible. And it stayed there or even lower. And, um, you know, I got to go, I forget when it was, last weekend or something. I went back. Well, right yeah. after the storm. Yeah, right after yeah. the storm, I my went. My wife was pissed at you yeah. again. <laughs> right after the storm, I went. So I think I'm the only geek that's been to both parks. Ha! Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> they are virtually yeah. identical, though, seriously. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, the ride time was uh, somewhere between like 25 to 45 minutes. I think the longest we saw was probably about an hour. And Ethan and I actually got in the ride when it said an hour. Um, oh, man, by the way, I'm a tangent already, so so we can't keep the time in. But 
I got in that line. It said an hour wait. It actually only took about 40, 45 minutes before we got up to the Hondo part. Mm -hmm. Dude, I had to piss so bad. So bad. I, I can't even explain to you how bad. And we got up to the, the room, you know, where the checker the chessboard is or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, Ethan, I'm not riding the ride. I'm leaving. And he's like, no, no, no. I'm like, dude, I have to go so bad. I'm going to die. I'd rather come back and wait in this line for an hour than do this. And he's like, no. So I'm like, okay, fine. So I ended up getting the engineer position on the, on the back left or whatever. And as soon as I sat down and put that buckle on like it went a little too tight dude it was squeezing my bladder so hard i spent the entire thing just staring at the buttons i wasn't looking at the screen i was trying to like sit as still as i could even though it shakes you around <laughs> <laughs> dude my back started hurting like I, i'm telling you i'm like killing my kidneys or something you know uh -huh. my back started hurting even afterwards you know i made it obviously but and I, we went straight to the straight to the restrooms and then he as soon as i got the off <laughs> yeah and i went my back hurt for like 20 minutes afterwards. Like it would not go away. Oh my, oh my God, I'm never doing that again. That's awful. <laughs> I, I've never had that happen. It was terrible. And nope. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but the ride's great. At my still. age, I never pass up a bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> drives my kids crazy. Anyway. So, so it's been, it's been steady about 45 to 75 minute wait time since. And I've seen a lot of stuff online, uh, star Wars fans, the star Wars fanatic site and stuff. People saying, uh, you know, it's a failure because there's not 10 hour wait times. And you remember Bob Iger made a big deal about that. Um, I, don't, I don't remember when it was, but they Probably were doing like an a avatar opened. quarterly earnings briefing or whatever. And he was saying like, you know, a 10 hour wait time is not a success. Yeah. Like that just pisses off everybody that's coming to your park. Nobody gets to have fun. Like right. that, that's not a good thing. So I think they've really done a lot of people question. Why did they open it now? August 29th, right? Because it's end of the summer. Yeah. Not very many people are traveling September, October, November to come down here. True. Um, even here locally, all the kids are in school already by that point, right? So I think that is all part of their crowd control. And I'm not sure if you've looked at the tickets now, but they've changed the, the ticketing too. So you can't just use the tickets whenever you want anymore for the local four days and stuff. Right. It's more, it's, it's more restricted and controlled. So I think this is all part of controlling you know it's yeah. it's not that people don't want to go it's that they've come up with a method and i'm sure the storm you know the hurricane probably messed it up a little sure but, yeah you had a lot of but people it's cancel. still i think it's still largely disney figured out a way to do this when to open it how to trickle people in and not have a rush like they did on the first day for the first month you know what i mean right yeah i, I think that's success i i think they i think they probably got something uh something working there well, yeah, they make an enjoyable experience for their their guests. So, it... yeah, I mean, I'm not complaining. When we went, we were able to get a reservation for the cantina. Um, you know, I was able to see everything. We got to ride the rides. Mm -hmm. I'm happier doing it that way. Yeah, really. Look, they, Disney's not going to lose money. They've been making billions for years now. They, uh, now, all of a sudden, every internet jockey knows that Disney's losing money. They're out of their minds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, it's just people don't understand, I think, that they've actually come up with a way to, to not get a million people there yeah. on week one. And yeah. they've spread it out, and they figured out how to open it, and that this is a smart way to do it. Yeah. I, I, I applaud them. Yeah, like you said, I think the hurricane has something to do with some of the numbers, but even still, though, that's what happens every every hurricane. People avoid mm -hmm. the parks, and they try to you – know, they're too busy getting ready for a storm. That's why you had half of our neighbors, like you, when they were done getting ready. Yeah texting pictures from the park like <laughs> nobody's here you know? <laughs> yeah so. all right so so this brings me to a, a sidebar that i wrote into the outline today so you can't call me captain tangent for this one even though i already tangented once but um i learned recently and i may just be i don't know the the terrible geek would you grab me one of those um i may just be the terrible geek that doesn't know what things are but i learned about two things in this past week that i had never heard of and i think both are super cool um the first one is called disney bounding which apparently my wife knew about and this is a thing that people do so you know how you can't go into the park in costume right for right. adults yes. i mean kids can do it but adults aren't allowed to do it well actually even i think i think the cutoff is like 14 or something it's not even really adults but. yeah it's pretty young it's young because they don't want 
well, they don't want anybody thinking to be, that yeah. you're one of the characters. Yeah, they don't want anybody to mistake you for a cast member or, or a character, right? <coughs> so you can't you can't wear the um, you can't wear the costumes, which includes, incidentally, and I also learned this this week, those robes they sell at Merchant Row, the Jedi robes, and the oh, really? yeah? you can't wear those. Huh. You can't wear those in the freaking park. I guess that makes sense. So anyway, so I learned about this biz- Disney bounding thing, which is basically this weird club of it's not a club, but this idea adults came up with well we can still look like characters without actually looking like we're in costumes so they like make up outfits that are like sort of normal clothes but they make you look like i've seen people character do that. Yeah, stuff yeah yeah you have to google it yeah yeah if you google it's... disney bounding there's literally like forums dedicated to how crazy people get with the i'm not in a costume but you can definitely tell who i am yeah. you know and they get really really creative with it like really creative oh yeah yeah i've seen some <laughs> i was really impressed by that i um, didn't know what it was called I just yeah knew disney was... bounding yeah freaking websites dedicated to it it's hilarious how disney people are I mean, i'm not even a huge disney fan i just like certain things like yeah marvel and star wars but yeah. you know it's, people are just crazy with it but but it's funny too i i think i I saw some really co- some cool Star Wars ones. Which is how I even learned about this was looking at people Disney bounding in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's weird. Um, so uh, the other thing I learned about this week, and I'm probably stupid for not knowing this sooner, but it's called kit bashing. So this is where you'll take something simple. I, I, I'm going to do this to my phone. But so you take something simple. Like I bought a I bought a very cheap flat like seven dollar plastic phone case right right and you take parts out of a plastic model kit like maybe a tank battleship something like that you know how it's got all the little intricate like and you 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 basically arrange all this stuff and you cut it with exacto knives and you arrange it on your phone case and you well this is just not not phone case necessarily you can do this with anything but I want to do it to my phone but um, you can make it look like something else like like a prop or whatever right so people have done this kit bashing and you'll have to look this up. To make their phones into data pads for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> so they take all these parts off like plastic tanks and stuff. And, you know, they've got all the little guns and the tubes. And, right. you know, and then they'll, they'll glue all that stuff on there. And then they kind of sand it down and spray paint it over and make it look all... It looks really freaking cool, man. Uh, they, by oh. the end of it, it's a foam. But, you know, it looks like it looks like something out of a Star Wars movie. It's really cool. I'm definitely doing it. I, <laughs> I already ordered some stuff online. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my two. That's my two nerd learn things here for the week. I've never heard of either of those, and now I want to do both. I things. never knew. I didn't know about the kit bashing or kit. Yeah, yeah, kit bashing. Kit that's bashing, what they call. Yeah. I guess because you're taking a like a model kit and you're just not using what it's intended for. Mm. You're just mashing it up with something else. Yeah, the other one I didn't know the name for it, but I've seen people doing it. So, uh, so yeah, so now. Sp- Speaking of Star Wars, and all speaking of Star Wars, yeah, this will be all Star Wars. We get yeah. so much. I know. I don't have a good segue when the whole thing is about Star Wars. We'll just keep speaking saying. Of the next speaking thing of Star list. Wars, <laughs> we'll just keep saying that between every. Speaking of Star yeah. Wars, so um, the Mandalorian series we we talked about. I hey, think. Did you guys check out the watch? The yeah. Witcher. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the uh, call back. The, <laughs> the Mandalorian series we had talked about. Um, I think on the stuff that was coming up streaming that we wanted to see, right? Yeah. So that's going to be on Disney Plus. Just a quick review. We've, we've already talked about it. I think it comes uh, November 12th. It's going to be available on launch. Um, and this is a Star Wars show, of course, based on a bounty hunter, not the bounty hunter that you would think with that name, but a bounty hunter. Right. Um, that looks a lot like Fett um, with the armor and everything. Yeah, but and there is another it. shot in one of the trailers that looks exactly like it. Yeah, like, yeah. Even, yeah. So that it will be exclusive Disney Plus will be one of the first uh, things they drop. It will be the first Star Wars TV series, like live action, because they've done a couple cartoons, but they've never done live action on the TV series. So it'll be the first one of those. Um, but but they announced a bunch of stuff about cast members and all that. I thought we'd go over it. But like I said, I put this on the blog already, but um, not everybody reads that. So, uh, <laughs> so this is going to be set between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. So... Um, what they said was uh, seven, years, seven after, right? years. Yep, seven years after Return of the Jedi, but twenty-three before The Force Awakens. So a couple things is you're probably not going to see any familiar faces from Force Awakens because it's you know, yeah. uh, Ray would be a baby fam- yeah. or not even exist. I don't know exactly no, how old they are in Force Awakens. But, yeah, so so they wouldn't even exist. And um, I mean, mostly you iconic. You might see Kylo being born, but then again, <laughs> they're not. I don't think they're going to even remotely touch. Well, yeah. So they'll um, touch. 
ancillary characters, but they won't touch any of the main. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember who said it, but one of the directors or something said specifically, you know, well, we're not going to do any characters you're familiar with. It's going to be all new characters for this show. But they're going to explore canon concepts, and this sure. will become canon, of course, yeah. because this is, this is this is the official stuff. So, um, they're going to explore like how the first order gets kicked off, like how you go from well, what happened between the Galactic the Empire Jedi. falling yeah. and the first order arising thirty years later. Sure, sure. So they're going to explore that, and they're they're going to do it in a way that's um i I guess a little bit unique because they're really the story is about the bounty hunter and what he's doing but they're trying to tell about all the yeah they're trying to tell the story of the galaxy at the same time sure um so there were a bunch of announcements on people who are playing all the parts the mandalorian is going to be pedro pascal who was in game of thrones and i think he played one of the lead characters on narcos um but i didn't watch that show um i know the name yeah so there's gonna be an ig11 droid of course it's not a real person but um uh Taiki Waititi, who does the you know the Australian sounding or New yeah, Zealand he's the sounding, for Thor Ragnarok, yeah. So yeah. But he also does the voice for the Korg, the rock yeah. dude. The, the, yeah, <laughs> I like his voice, funny. So that might be funny. So it isn't IG88, although it looks like it. In the, um, yeah, and he's pissed because he keeps getting mistaken. For yeah, I, I, I read yeah, that's that apparently yeah. some part of the yeah, part, like part of the storyline or whatever. So um, Carl Weathers will be like the head of the Bounty Hunter Guild. And of course, he was you know all through the Predator franchise yep. and the Apollo Rocky Creed. franchise. Yep. Um, Cara Dune, who played Angel Dust in the Deadpool movie. Um, Cara Dune. What, what? No. Cara Dune is, Cara the, Dune character. is the character. Sorry, Gina, Gina Carano, Carano, who played Angel. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Cara Dune is playing Gina know. Carano. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> It's better that way, isn't it? So <laughs> some rebel sh- rebel shock trooper that's like turned Merc or something um, could be cool. interesting. Yeah. What? I said cool. No, oh, she, okay. she, yeah, she's pretty good. Um, she's gotten better in the roles I've seen her in. And then uh, the one I'm really excited about is um, Giancarlo Esposito, who did uh, uh, Gus Fring in Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Yeah. You know, so he's gonna be the bad guy in this, Moff or at least Gideon, one yeah. of them. Yeah, he's yeah, Mark Gideon. Him. So. So the way his story works is that basically the empire's fallen, but then instead of losing, he's like a governor or whatever, sort of like a governor of the of the place that they're in, the place of the story set in. But instead of losing power, he basically becomes like sort of this warlord, and like all these people have like you know pledged fealty to him, so he still has like control. They split up and, into yeah. factions, probably, and then the first order will eventually. So I come think in. they can make a really interesting story out of that. There was a bunch of other people, not a bunch, uh, maybe five other people, six, I think. Uh, no five uh, announced that they don't. We don't know what the part is. They haven't said what they're playing. So Emily Swallow, who's in um, Supernatural, um, Ming Na Wen, who is in that Agents of Shield show. Yeah, she's good. I like her. Um, Nick, Nolte, Nick Nolte, of course. <laughs> he's old, but you know, um, Werner Herzog. You know, he's in this, he's been in a bunch of stuff, but has like tiny roles on the side and stuff. And he I probably know my face. Grizzly Man know. documentary, which apparently yeah. a lot of people have seen, but I haven't. Um, and then it was just announced last Friday that um, Julia Jones, who plays Leah in the Twilight series, or um, the the wife that gets killed in the Jonah Hex movie, oh, okay. yeah, right. so, okay. that's really a lesser role for her. But anyway, so she's she's going to be in it, but we also don't know what she's doing. So, All right. well, I you know I I've, I've read rumors, and I'm wondering what, like what your opinion would be because I I agree with the theory that. Initially, I think John Favreau went to uh, Disney, right, Lucasfilm, w- pitching a Boba Fett series, and then the, for whatever reason they were like, "No, you can't do that," <laughs> but we can use what you're doing, and then they kind of tweaked it to this because it. I mean, it looks like you know what I mean. Like he's got yeah. such a love of the series, it just it, this looks like it would be. A Boba Fett series, and then like they kind of okay. Now we got to tweak it to do something. Different. Yeah, I mean they've certainly unless this dude is straight up like part of the writing is this guy is looking for Boba Fett or trying to track him down. You know, throughout season one or two, whatever that'd be kind of cool too. So I think it's, I mean, it's. I think he was pitching a Fett series, and they were yeah, like, Ugh, you can't. Do so that. I think it was expanded universe that Fett actually survives being thrown in the Sarlacc yes. pit. Yeah, and Dengar winds yeah. up finding him in the in the desert and yeah, bring like. But I don't think uh, they can use that material though. There's always this they thing can about pick it. well, they can do whatever they want. Yeah, and, and actually, Ben so- or Kylo Ren, Ben Solo, is yeah, really, he's an amalgamation of uh, Jason and his brother Anakin. Yeah, and they and they did say that they looked to some of the extended universe sure. content to come up with storylines for this. Yeah, 
Um, but I, I don't know how exactly it plays out. So I, I very much doubt there will be a Boba Fett. But he did. Uh, Favreau posted on his Instagram. Did you see that? It was uh, it was uh, the rifle, that crazy-ass rifle from the Star Wars Christmas special. Yeah, that, well, it's, uh, I recognized it was on his back in the first <laughs> – yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. It was. The promotional shot. Yep, you could see the, like, uh, the, the stock curve, of it or stock, whatever. Yeah. yeah. I pointed it out to you guys then. I was like, that's the same friggin' rifle. Because that's how I was like, I think this is going to have a lot to do with that. Yeah, you should look at his Instagram account if you're really interested in the show. Because I he thought is, I was following him, but He dropped I, like 50 hints, but just in like pictures with hardly saying anything. They're just like super teasers, but they're nice. Okay, nice cool. to see him. Yeah, so yeah, I was worried. About, I was wondering about that. Uh, Taika Waititi, yeah, he's great. I love him. I I love Looking forward voice. to the other shit. I think it'll be it'll make a great voice for a robot. It it's really gonna be amazing. Will. Yeah, I think, I think that's really gonna funny. be like the what, K2SO from Yeah, I think Rogue so. One. It's gonna yeah. be him. Yeah, yep. probably sarcastic and, yeah. and they'll show some calling even, everybody meatbags. Even in the uh, trailer they dropped with him, I mean, he, it looks like he's gonna be entertaining. And if you add to that character that he's mad about me mistaken for IJ, that's just funny. that's amazing. You know, that's a funny way to throw comedy in there. I, I'm I'm excited. I'm super excited. I hope it's I hope it's not a flop. And and they they also announced that uh, they've already signed for season two on that show. I think. Uh yeah yeah I think they did. Which tells me hey you know. Yeah, so I'm not sure. I think the first season is eight. F- well, I saw eight episodes listed on IMDb, but then I also read in a previous article that they had said there were ten in the pilot series. I don't know what the truth is, but it'll be eight to ten. I think eight Something seems like normal now for streaming yeah. pilots. Eight, eight, eight episodes seems like the normal thing to do. Um, all right. Uh, what else do we have? <laughs> oh, I love this note that you put in there. Oh, which the, the, it, or did I skip something? Because I printed the old. Oh, I don't know. No, no. Sebastian Sands. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so um, for anybody that that follows the Twitter sphere, and I, I just recently started doing this because John made me. But um, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Get on Twitter. <laughs> Yeah, but I, so I, I went and followed Mark Hamill and everybody else I thought was interesting. But um, so there's this thing, uh, Sebastian Stan, who kind of sort of looks like Mark Hamill. Not really, though. I mean, a little bit, I guess. They, they might have some. I mean, this is Winter Soldier, if you don't know who Sebastian Stan yeah. is, right? Yeah. So certainly Fuck. in that, he doesn't look anything like Mark Hamill. I'm but, trying to think of him like without the... So, well, this this is what it, this is why I put this note in here because I was really getting annoyed by this. So there was this thing that started. I'm not sure if it started on Reddit board or that Morphe Me Instagram account where they merge celebrities right. together. But there was a picture floating around, and it shows Mark Hamill on one side, and it shows what supposedly Sebastian Stan on the other side, and then in the middle is like Sebastian Stan's face on Mark Hamill's, you know, right, right. Luke Skywalker outfit and hair. Sure. And people are like, oh my god, they're identical twins. The thing that's that's pisses me off about it is the right side picture of Sebastian Stan is not Sebastian Stan. It's already Sebastian Stan and Mark Hamill merged <laughs> into one <laughs> picture, and then they're putting that side by side. Oh like, wow. Like, dude, they don't look that much alike, right. right? And it's it's a headshot, it's a legit headshot that they took from Sebastian Stan. You know, one of those like you know, did do head yeah. headshots for his for his uh uh Acting. Yeah, yeah movies, CV, whatever yeah. you call him, his resume. <laughs> so, you know, it's a legit picture, but they've like flipped it around and then they merged it with Mark Hamill's face and then they took that and made the comparison. And there's some obvious giveaways. Like Mark Hamill has this weird thing where like the bottom parts of his eyes are like really round. And, uh, you know, yeah. his, his uh, Stan's eyes are like more flat at the bottom. It's like, and, and Mark Hamill has that, you know, that, I don't know what you call it, that stint tag, that mole thing that's under yeah. his mouth. And he's got one on his right cheek. And those are also present on Sebastian Stan in the picture. It's like, it's obvious that somebody has doctored this. Yeah. But everybody's like losing their shit. Like, oh my God, they're twins. And then Mark Hamill and Sebastian Stan made it worse. Because Hamill saw a picture of it that somebody else shared. And he freaking t- retweeted it or whatever, you know. And he was like, oh yeah, this sounds great. And then this started this whole back and forth thing where they're calling each other son and dad. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> stop it. And <clears throat> Hamill's usually pretty funny on Twitter, so... Yeah. But hey, you know, whatever. Uh, they've been talking about Sebastian Stan doing like a Luke. Well, so, yeah. And that, that, that's thing. where we're getting on this because I actually don't want that to happen. No. I feel like Hamill's Skywalker should be the end of it all. That's it. Don't do anything yeah. else. And If anything, with the Disney Plus, because I would love to see the rise and fall of him building the 
the Jedi Academy, right? Mm-hmm. So what JJ initially envisioned, <laughs> you know. But so, but do it animated. Yeah, you could do that. That would be fun. Or, or, you, or if you really want to go live action, you can do a live action series on Disney Plus. Find someone that looks really close to Mark Hamill, kind of like when they did River Phoenix for Young Indiana Jones, whatever you know. <sighs> but the problem there is. Mark Hamill was already established as the young Skywalker, and then you got this different guy in between. Exactly, know? and I think based on his age so and how animated, old he looks, you can't do the, the timeline that might be that might be interesting, um, which is what you Unless said, you setting, setting up the. Well, but that's a lot of de aging for a series. Like that's a lot. I don't know, man. I just yeah. don't think it's gonna work. And besides that, they're I acting, just go animated. Their acting styles are nothing alike anyway. I would just go animated. There's very let, different. Let Hamill voice it. Hamill's an incredible voice actor, and if you want him to be himself again, I mean, you know, yeah. a character who's yeah, already played, sure. yeah. he could do it. Oh yeah, that would work shot. in a heartbeat. That'd be easy. Do it animated. I would love to see that. Yeah, but no. So I'm not down for this. Sebastian Stan can be in Star Wars, sure, but please don't make him Luke Skywalker at any point. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> just leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, he, he could be another Jedi. Uh, and so then the, that brings us to I think the last topic that you wanted to do, which was the um, uh, trailer. The trailer, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the dark, the dark ray trailer, I think we'll call uh, it. So yeah, well, yeah, because we can call it the homage trailer. Yeah, because this whole thing was an homage from all the previous eight movies. Really, it concentrated heavily on the first six. Right. Yep. It went through this whole thing, and as it's going through all these little screenshots from those various movies, you get the Luke um, voiceover of, you know, we've taught you all we know, a thousand years of Jedi live in you now, blah, 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 whatever, right? So, and then it kind of cuts to maybe about a minute of new, newer footage, or yeah. footage from this movie, because some of it yeah. you've seen before. Um, I want to say, I think... Go back and watch the homage part of it. I think those scenes were specifically picked for a reason, not just because they all look nice together, but I think it's got a lot to do with what you're going to see in nine. <laughs> you, you know, just, like, just you're, a, you're one of those fan theorists that are back there. Like you got you got a you got a board in your room with strung string all tied around. Yeah, yeah. And well, you know, I started and... it with Stephen King years ago. And I could never <laughs> stop, and I always theor- I theorize everything. But I think those. All of that shit together has something to do with. I mean, obviously, it all led to that, but I think yeah. there's a reason they use certain shots, in certain whatever. scenes, or yeah. whatever. You think there's meaning behind them? There could be. Yeah. I, I didn't really pay that much attention. But then you get to all right. So you get to the end of the roll through the last few seconds of that trailer where you see like you know again Ray with um, Chewie and Poe and Finn or whoever yeah on on land somewhere. They're checking some shit out, right? And then uh, it cuts to whatever else, right? So we can break all these down here in a minute. But you got that shot. You got a shot of C-3PO at Red Eyes. Red Eyes, yeah. Oh, God. And that, we'll, call, oh. we'll call that back to another shot yeah, in the yeah. other trailer here in a minute. And then I guess just, you know, you got um, Ray and Kylo fighting on that hunk of metal yeah it looks so. like the front of a battleship or something yeah looks- yeah it lo- really lo- literally looked like a, a half sunken battleship yeah, yeah. yeah so they're fighting it out there and then you know kind of everything goes black whatever and then it cuts back to uh a double red lightsaber ignites. Oh. here's my one problem was the two blades are both facing the same direction right yeah yeah so, which just seems kind of ridiculous to me there and then it's ray in a black hood with this double red lightsaber thing, so it looks like dark ray is what we're calling yeah. her. And then she snaps it, and it's like snaps into a staff, a la Darth Maul. Okay, right? all right. So which goes to her staff uh, wielding abilities in yeah. Force Awakens or whatever. Which is fine. I'm fine with that part. The biggest problem I have is when it's folded up. Yeah. What is that? It's stupid. That makes me angry. Like. Who would ever carry – okay, forget about the lightsabers for a minute. Who would ever carry around a weapon that was two handles two inches apart from each other unless, with two blades on it? What the hell is the point it, of that? it's two sabers and they have some type of quick connect mechanism on them and all you see in that one shot is – Dude, dude. Because okay. all you see is her ignite it and it's two blades side by side with each other and it looks stupid. 
Yeah, I think if you were going to do that, you do it one of two ways. So obviously her staff fighting thing is is a point that's legit that you made. And that's a cool way to sort of pay homage to that. Right. But it could have been two separate sabers that she attached or something. This right. fold-out Swiss Army Knife bullshit. Yeah, which, yeah, all the memes are all about that. Yeah. Go check them out. They're Swiss great. Army They're Saber. Oh In fact, I think God. I put that on our Facebook. We're going to yeah. have to put it on the website, too. But It's uh, ridiculous. It looks stupid. It doesn't make sense. It told. It, this is exactly what that part said to me, and then we'll get into the rest of this. That one part told me... Lucasfilm, JJ, they're all like, what can we give them at the end of this trailer that's going to look cool and grab their attention so they'll shut up about Last Jedi for five minutes? All right, so... And that's what that was. Yeah, I've spent far too much time reading fan theories on stuff. (laughs) uh, I haven't. Over the past week, particularly on this trailer, because people have so many goddamn theories, it's ridiculous. But, um... This this one this this particular scene you're referring to people have said everything from she's turned to the dark side to she's she's one of the gray let's, Jedi. Let's save that one until let's roll through real quick yeah. the uh, the C three PO one. Then let's get into the dark ray and then we can kind of end. Oh, the I, I want to tell you the three PO fan theory I read today. It just made me fucking okay. laugh. All I got to, all I got to say is with the red eyes, it also calls back to the one shot of him like kind of standing on that barge, holding on to one of the. The poles and it looks like he's carrying a blaster everyone's like oh c3po has got like a kill mode kind of you know yeah kind of like a la spider-man and endgame whatever you know kill mode engaged yeah whatever i don't know go ahead what, what's the fan theory because um, I, I barely read part of one earlier today and i was like all right eh. so so this is i actually read two on this that are very similar but the second one really made me laugh so one is because you hear Pal- palpatine laughing or whatever right that he is like figured out some way to cheat death, which everybody knows the Sith say, you know, that's that's some like the, you can cheat death, right? You may not be a forced well, which, ghost or yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's why I thought that Snoke you can was cheat Plagueis, death. Plagueis, yeah. remember? Yep, so so it was like, okay, so um, Sidious figured out some way to possess C-3PO. Okay, that's, I read that, yeah. that's ridiculous in itself. And if that's true and they make C-3PO's eyes turn red. It is the dumbest idea ever. But I heard an even better one. And it's right along the same lines, but it just made me laugh so hard. So you know how Anakin built C-3PO, right? So this was like a whole thing where he built C-3PO and then he purposely avoided like destroying him or anything when they ever ran into each other in any episode along the whole way because his whole reasoning was this, so he could come back and possess the droid's body after he was dead. <laughs> you know what? Oh, God. Don't do it, John. Pa- hey, <laughs> Palpatine used the dark side of the Force to impregnate Shmi Skywalker, right? <laughs> so this was his plan all along. <laughs> his plan to rule the galaxy was to die, come back 30 years later, and embody the most effeminate droid yeah. the galaxy has ever known. Yeah. I could definitely see that. And then, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just figured out uh, the uh, Rise of Skywalker. We're done. Yeah, I think if they do this, I will boycott. I will boycott the sequel series forever. <laughs> it better not be what it is. It's so ridiculous. Come on, though, really. I know. The, the red. Like, I, stop it. Okay. All right. So, because uh, now that's a perfect segue into the Dark Ray. All right. There are many theories going on outside of the fact that her lightsaber sucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was just a. That was. It's. It screamed. Fan. Yeah, it fan was, service. Yeah, gimmick, it was a know? really, really, really like, poor attempt at fan service. Up? Yeah, like hurry up. What can we hurry up and put together in here? Like Obviously at least malls. Of, at least malls made sense. Like Jesus yeah. Christ, this thing is ridiculous. Yeah, it was just stupid. Anyway, uh, on. Once every after that, everyone was talking. What's dark ray? What's dark ray? I've heard. Obviously, it's as simple as she turns, and or it's as simple as it's a vision. Which I would kind of go. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a vision. I think it's uh, a vision too. Yeah, it's the one fan theory I actually agree with. Yeah, it's a vision because they've been having visions everywhere. She has, yeah. Even on that island in particular, well, they made a huge had, deal about Luke it. Luke had one in Dagobah. Well, yeah, that's true. So, but they made a big deal about Rey having this sort of draw to the dark side, but never yeah. succumbing to it. It was always just sort of like uh, right. she's in the moment, she sees what's happening, she gets a hold of it, and then she's out. Right. Yeah. So I think it's a vision. Um, 
another theory I heard was that you know she'll fall to the dark side and uh, Kylo will switch to the light to try to save her or whatever. Yeah, so I heard switch, that one too. Right? Now, so I, I could actually It'll be a one for one kind of. I could deal with that one. It'd be all right. Now the other theory I heard. Oh God. And then we can get into some really ludicrous shit before we end. Uh, is that Ray? The Ray you see there is not the same Ray you see in the last two movies. Ray is a series of clones. Oh, made yes, from, I read this one too. The made Emperor from had, the Emperor so, and Luke's hand and parts of Anakin. So I think is it canon that the Emperor had a bunch of clones made of himself, or is it that was, an extended universe? It was. Uh, yeah, now it's Legends, but it was in okay. fact with, like, what, the early stuff, like almost immediately after uh, Return of the Jedi. Some of those books, like shortly after the uh, the Admiral Thrawn series, after that they got into uh, the uh, Emperor coming back in a series of clones. He even cloned Luke, and he had this dark clone of Luke, who was named Luke. It was L U U K E. Luke. He stole that from Vader. Luke. Yeah, yeah. I am your father. <laughs> oh my god so anyway um <laughs> i fucked myself up on that one the theory is that ray is another attempt at clone yeah so that the emperor could possess her or whatever yeah no i read that one uh too. now it's not far off the mark though if you think about it one it's been in the expanded universe two it's been in this universe because of attack of the clones Mm-hmm. They've got the technology to clone. Yeah. Well, somebody does. Right. But uh, it, it, that could be it. Now, I don't want to think about the CGI fest that's going to be her fighting a bunch of Ray clones. Because now, okay, on the one hand, that would probably be an easy way to flip Kylo because he's wishy washy about what he's going to do. If there's a whole bunch of dark rays coming at him. He might switch and join her and help her, you know, if he sees her getting killed or getting attacked. You know, he might decide to join the join the light side, whatever, the gray Jedi. But I just, I, I don't want to see it. I keep thinking uh, Neo and the, ag- the agent in Matrix. When, Mr. Like, Smith. Yeah, when, when it's just like really bad CGI when he's fighting like a whole bunch of them. Oh, yeah, and they're like spinning around in circles. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I keep thinking of. And I'm like, oh, please don't do this. It's like it's not even physics anymore. It's yeah, like, what the fuck no, is happening? Oh, no. uh, that, that was kind of a point, but... Uh, well, yeah, but still. Yeah, so you know what? You know what I hope? I hope Ray is not related to anybody or not part of anything, and she's just a rando. Because... They're, they're, unfortunately, if they go down this path of doing something like that, and it doesn't have to be a clone. It could be somebody's kid, long lost. They're establishing this thing of, like, Jedi can only be, like, this lineage or whatever, and you're part of it or you're not. And, they, and they're even doing that a little bit with the name of the movie. But well, yeah. instead it could be, like, Skywalker is just, like, an idea. You know what I mean? It's just well, like Well, that a, is a thing. There was initially, in some of Lucas's early work, the Skywalkers were the Jedi. Exactly. So, and this is how it should go. And and this is just me talking, but you know, it, it would be much better if she was a nobody and she just rose up from nothing. And, and that's what Ryan Johnson wanted. Yeah, that's I, I disagree just because of what JJ set up. Really? That, well, you remember we had that whole conversation about how I thought after Force Awakens how it was going to lay itself out. Yeah. And I agree. I think me personally, and this is just because it came out of my own head cannon. But I thought I literally thought that's what JJ was setting up. How I uh, spoke about it on here, and I'll get on our website and I'll start a whole blog about it where we can kind of discuss it with other people. But I'll kind of lay out this is what I thought from Force Awakens, what was going to happen, and then this is where everything changed, and then whatever, and then this is where I think we are now. But I really thought he she was going to be at least Luke's daughter, if not uh, his daughter with. With Obi Wan's daughter, like I thought he, she was going to be Obi Wan's granddaughter and Luke's daughter. Now Obi Wan could have had some kids and all that time for sure. No, that was the thing. Like, yeah. They they did it in the Clone Wars. They, yeah. they didn't specify, um, but he met. Uh, I forget her name. I forget her name too. <laughs> S- something with an S, I think. Yep, I think Satia, you're right. S- Sabine. I think it's Sabine. I don't know. We'll have to go back and look. 
But in the Clone Wars, he falls in love or he's got feelings for this woman, but they, that's all they, they leave it as. But it's very vague as to whether or not they did anything. Yeah, yeah. And that was my theory was that while Luke was trying to rebuild this academy, he was going to find out that Obi Wan did have this kid. He had this relationship through like journals in his house or whatever. He found he finds out that he's got this family, yeah. and he goes and he seeks her out to try to help rebuild the uh, academy, and then falls in love with her and has Ray. I really think that was I. Okay. I thought that was where they were going, and I'll flesh it all out. I'll write it throughout the week and I'll submit it to our website. I just wish they wouldn't do the legacy though. I feel like... Well, see, the thing is though, even like from prior, right? It was, you saw all these different Jedi. The story became about the Skywalkers because it was just, it was that story. But there have been others out there and there are others, excuse me, out there. Like once you got into... The uh, expanded universe stuff now, or the legends as they call them, yeah. it was like Luke rebuilding the academy, and he was finding these other Force users. They weren't necessarily all related to anybody; they just they were out there, and they were really good characters. But they just right now they're telling this one story, so to kind of make to make sense of some of the stuff they've done, it made more sense for her to be his kid. Mm-hmm. And then they can kind of branch off from there and do whatever they want. I could probably deal with that more than the others, I suppose. But yeah, I mean they've already done. Like, Plus, what's her face? Felicity is still yeah. in this, and you don't know who she is. I really think she's going to play Ray's mother, and that she was Luke's wife. As I really think you're going to find that out. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a Either whole. Way, I hope this thing is like three fucking hours. Because <laughs> if I if I sat through like I'm not sat through, if I enjoyed Endgame for three hours. If you somehow manage to fix this this debacle that's going on right now between the last two movies, and you can fix it and give us a good ending, which apparently everybody is saying, the, the ones that have made it anyway, are saying the, the whole thing is going to blow your mind. Yeah. Uh, the ending is going like, to blow your mind. Yeah, so, and that's, maybe that's what we'll be talking about in December. And how yeah, freaking but epic if you can is, do it, I, I think you give J.J. as much time as he needs Give him the whole three hours that you managed, you know, you gave it to uh, Marvel for Endgame. Hell, uh, It Chapter 2 that we'll review in the next episode. Yeah. That was two hours and 45 minutes. Give Star Wars three hours. Give it to it. Well, I mean, hell, give it more. Fuck it. Give I'll, me an intermission. I'll I don't care. That, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, you need an intermission. Yeah. I, I, I can't. I read. I read some quote recently. It was like uh, the length of a movie should be related to the capacity of a human bladder. <laughs> it was saying like you, you can't have movies longer than like two and a half or three hours. At it most. is true. Yeah, because <laughs> somebody's you, gonna have gonna to go, get up. If you're gonna go over three hours, but honestly, to end, well, to end a uh, what do you even call saga? this? Uh, nonology. It would be called a nonology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To end the Skywalker saga, <laughs> you need somewhere between three and four hours. I think. Just to fix it all. Yeah, at that point, though, you do what the, what they did with the Potter movies, and yeah. you, make, you make two final movies. Yeah. It's split in half, and then you end at ten. Yeah, I'm good with that. That's good. What, well, what if they do that? What if they're not saying anything and they end it like not like nine <laughs> ends, and everyone's like, "What the fuck?" And like, "See you next year, fuckers. <laughs> Bring your money." <laughs> that's that'd funny. be fucking amazing. That would be hilarious, but I doubt that's gonna happen. No, it won't. It won't. I'd be all in. All right. All right. All right. Well, so we good on that. So that's yeah. the end of the geekly weekly Star Wars. That I think I think we were successful, right? Yeah. You're trying we're to keep it 43. thirty to forty five minutes. Oh, all right. All right. Well, we're if we gonna, wrap this up, we're going to wrap it up real <laughs> fast. Make all you people that want a shorter episode is happy. Yeah. So, so I think maybe we'll do this format change. Well, we'll do um, some of these shorter ones, but but John and I and Paul can't not talk about things. So there's going to yeah. have to be hour to hour and a half episodes <laughs> thrown yeah, so in between. We'll, we'll figure this out. But I think for, for a weekly review, we could split things up and make them 30 to 45 minutes. And people can listen to them while they run or whatever, which we'll try. is what I heard. We'll try. All right. You know, you can always pause it and come back to you fuckers. Yeah, I know. Anyway. Right? If nobody gets this. So <laughs> I know. I, apparently, I do it all the time. thing people do. I don't know. Well, all right. So now we're running over. Um, so, yeah, let us know what you think of the Star Wars news that we dropped. Um, hit us up at whatifgeeks at gmail.com. What if geeks.com. You can come check out the website, check out all our fun shit. We got a lot of cool shit that we're going to go into in the next episode that I'm going to uh, talk to Eric about. And then, uh, yeah, hit us up Instagram, uh, Twitter, all that shit. Uh, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Good night, Tony. Good night, Mike.